we are looking at the Blooms, a brand new overdrive pedal from Earthquaker Devices and their very first pedal design, specifically for us bass players. It has three different clipping modes on a toggle switch. You guys know how I love toggle switches. At the end of the day, spoiler alert here, there are probably only two things you need to know about this. And these two things are not being paid for by Earthquaker Devices. Yep, they sent me the pedal. But as you well know, if you've ever watched one of my videos before, I just like to make cool sounds with cool stuff. And the two things you really need to know about this pedal are the cost and that it sounds freaking awesome. But first, let's start the show. So our first example has us in clipping mode one. I'm gonna go from probably least useful to most useful with these examples. And the first one is if you ever wanted to sound like Hans Zimmer scoring the movie Interstellar, for instance, I've added a ton of reverb for anyone who's interested. I'm using the Eventide black hole and I've pushed the blooms through it using clipping one, using a bunch of dirty overdriven sound to create this massive wide cinematic soundscape. going to go with kind of a synth bass sound. What I love to do is have an octave pedal into an overdrive distortion fuzz and here we go. We've got our overdrive. I'm using the vintage bass octave by MXR in front of this and you'll hear examples with just those two pedals and then at times I'm adding a filter after the fact to give it a little bit more bounce in the mix. <laughs> Before we move on to our third and final musical example, I want to give you some kind of naked versions of what the overdrive pedal, what the Blooms is doing to the octave signal that I'm feeding into it. Can be a little more challenging to hear that in the context of drums and in a track. So I want to let you know what the octave sounds like on its own, just clean with no modulation, no distortion. And then this is what the Blooms is doing to that. And then here's the naked version with all three components, the octave pedal, the blooms, and the filter at the end of the signal chain. Our third example here is probably what a pedal like this will be most commonly used for, and that's overdrive. That's straight up rock and roll. I've got a bunch of tone rolled on, and I'm playing with a pick on a precision style bass, wide open, lots of open strings. I even got it to clang a little bit on the low E and G natural. I really, so the response in the pick, like in the right hand and the picking hand felt really good. That was kind of a surprise. I didn't expect it to kind of leap out of me so much or at least have the option to leap out. 
definitely controllable with a little palm muting and gave me like a really nice range with the right hand when I was kind of digging in and just going all out kind of Royal Blood or Foo Fighters, whatever, you know, insert name of your favorite rock band that uses overdrive on the bass. simple not only do I like simple I like things that have a ton of range that remain simple to use I don't look at the instruction manual and you know take into account all of the components and all of the features I just plug it in turn knobs until I find something that sounded good what was su most surprising about this pedal was I plugged it in it sort of sounded good immediately without really having to do anything I'm not sure exactly what it copies or what it's attempting to emulate maybe a tube screamer maybe a soft tech I'm not sure I got some of those feelings from it though. That's sort of my initial reaction having had it a few days and, and messed around with it within the context of my pedal board and of course outside of the board on its own. I think it's really dynamic. That's what I like about it. I mentioned the clanging option, like the higher end clicky kind of thing when I was playing with a pick. I really dig the fact that it has that at one end and then it has some really subtle sort of low volume, you know, distortion and breakup where I needed it and that it, it can make a kind of a, a square wave and a, and a fuzz sound and give me that synth bass option. And for the price for $99, I, it's, it's tough to argue with, right? I think the fact that something this high quality and with that much range is available for that price is a massive win. Again, Earthquake Devices, aside from sending me the unit to, to share with you guys and not paying me for my opinion, I will link Earthquake Devices in the description of the video below. If you use any of those links, they are not affiliate links. I don't gain anything by you purchasing any of these, any of their stuff actually. So go ahead, check it out for yourself. I highly recommend it. Again, at $99, it's sort of hard not to just give it a go. And I think, you know, long may Earthquake Devices keep making pedal specific uh, to us bass players. I've always been a fan of their stuff, their Avalanche Run Reverb, and they, they make a bunch of weird things. That's, that's the lane I sort of live in, is sort of not that useful, but you can find that one thing that sounds freaking amazing. So I'm a big fan of any company who's, who's kind of in that world, and if they're starting to make pedals specifically for bass players, I think that's a massive win for all of us weirdos out there. So that's it, don't forget to hit the like button if you dig what you're seeing, subscribe to the channel, it really helps make videos like this possible, it makes me more visible, and companies like this want to send me stuff to share with you, I think everyone wins in that case. So consider subscribing, it's completely free, if you don't dig it, you can always unsubscribe, and hitting the like button, and asking me a question, which I'm very happy to get into and reply in the comments below, also also helps the video and helps get it seen by as many people as possible. That's it. See you on the next one.